I'm not afraid. I'm yeah. Not afraid to take the it's been a ride. Everybody, I guess I had to go to that place to get to this one. Now some of you might still be in that place if you're trying to get out. Just follow me. Now decertification has happened, a lockout has happened, and the case has filed Tom Brady and many other plaintiffs in a class action lawsuit against the NFL. The owners don't win by having a lockout. Uh, shutting down your business is not good for anybody. Over the last 15 years, every team's value has grown by approximately 500%. This isn't a strike. Uh, the players aren't striking because they want more money. This is a lockout. The owners are threatening to lock their employees out of the building unless they take a pay cut. We want to structure something that, that really is going to lead us into the next decade in a, in a way that's constructive. So the players benefit, uh, the teams benefit, and most of all, the game. Without having a contract and without having them on the playing field and receiving money, we're going to see money come, you know, be pulled out, and they're not going to reduce their expenses enough because their lifestyles are so big, and uh, and the amount of money they make is not exactly what people think it is. This has been coined as billionaires versus millionaires, and the billionaires are going to win. I mean, the billionaires can withstand this. The average player cannot withstand this. We're still in a world where our players play for an average of 3.5 years and none of their contracts are guaranteed. We offered to guarantee for, for the first time in the history of the league more than one year of injury on player contracts. Apparently not good enough. They don't care about the safety of the game. You can sit there and say, you know, you're worried about concussions, but they're hypocrites. You know, you say one thing and you do another. You talk about safety, but you add on two games. They're taking, you know, absurd amounts of money from me um, for, for plays that, you know, I consider to be um, clean um, and illegal hits. There are techniques that are in the game that we think can lead to more serious injuries, whether they're head injuries, the high hits to the head. You know, it almost seems like you know, the more flags we throw, the more fines we dish out, we can say we're protecting the game. Now we can have 18 games, because look how we're protecting it. We're not machines, we're humans. You know, so, you know, after the first three, four months, your body feels a certain way. But then now you're talking about at 18 games. 18 games, you gotta ask yourself, how many people are truly healthy in 18 games? What we're asking them to do is to recognize the incredible costs, which they have already acknowledged, that are required to grow revenue. You have to invest in these stadiums that we're in today. You need to find new ways of creating revenue. Everybody wants a stadium like Jerry Jones now has in Dallas, which is the Taj Mahal of stadiums. Because it's the biggest that there is. That board uh, costs more than the entire cost of Texas Stadium, the stadium we just moved out from. The current agreement that we have is just not sustainable long term. It's not a healthy one for the NFL. It's not a healthy one for our fans. It's not a healthy one really for the players over the long period of time or the owners. The players are saying you haven't demonstrated to us that you're in enough distress to take back so much money from our contract, from our existing contract. For an industry that's making $9 billion a year in revenue, uh, they can figure out how to divide it up uh, in a sensible way. Uh, and be true to their fans, who are the ones who uh, obviously allow. We need to avoid all of this. Football has been the smart sport. It's by two to one the most popular sport in this country for a reason. The fan is not paying to watch Dan Snyder smoke cigars. The fan is paying to watch Peyton Manning throw a football. And so the players believe that they are entitled to a 50-50 cut of the revenue. The owners would like the players to take something less than that. Well, they'll be football. This league is not suicidal. And uh, this isn't a negotiation. It's a big one. If we get locked out, just like if they get locked out, we have 30,000 people who work in our stadiums. They're locked out. The bars and the restaurants that rely on football, they're locked out. The families of our players who rely on the health care, no health care. So I don't really look at this as a battle between millionaires and billionaires. I look at this as a battle between 32 people who can unilaterally shut down our game and America who digs it. If both sides give a little, everyone can gain a lot.